Hey guys. Hi, you guys. How are you? Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Hi, Jessica. Hi, Erwin. Mitch, remind me which company you are with. Uh, I'm sorry, I tend to forget. Oh, liquid, right. Now you're dead. Thank you. <laughs> How is it going, Roy? Good afternoon. Hey, hi. Hey, bro. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Drew. Did we have any opens um, this week before we get started with the agenda? Or any ask from last call? No opens? Okay. Arvin, uh, are you going to be sharing anything? Yeah, I actually have access to a doc now, so I could share. And um, um, did we, I'm trying to remember, <laughs> uh, did we have any uh, Questions. Uh, I think, um, Drew, you said something about the, the, the bit fields in the tracker sheet or the thing that we are sharing. You're going I'm to sorry, you, 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 you broke up. Could you say I said something about what in the tracker sheet? So last time we talked about the bit fields or bit fields or descriptions. You said you're going to talk to be lost oh, about it. I, are I, you okay with that? I have not pinged be lost. I was. I think I, I think it's okay, but I mean, let's just hide the yeah, column. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you, but yeah, let's just leave the column hidden until okay. we can talk to B. Loss and and uh, I forgot to mention it to him last time I talked to him. I'm sorry. That's all right. Yeah. Oh, okay, so we are five minutes over, and I think uh, we have fairly good. Uh, I don't see Vilas or uh, uh, Vilas or Carlo. Um, Carlos, Rama is here. That's good. Mark is here. I am already here. Jubida. So we let's get uh, let's start sharing, Erwin. Let's get started. Okay. Hi. Good afternoon. All right. So um, we went through a journey, quite a journey, last week. Uh, I forgot to share. Give me a second. Are you seeing, hopefully? Hi, this is Anna joining. I, I, I just saw you start sharing, Erwin. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I shared just the application, but it didn't look like it. Let me try again. Oh, uh, yeah, I saw it, that's your, your spreadsheet. Oh, okay, uh, I'll try it one more time. Okay, good. <laughs> it scared me a little because the uh, the way Zoom works is kind of weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so we went through quite a journey last week. Um, 
talk about advising on fatal errors and uh, specifically just sticking with completer boards. And um, in, in, uh, here's the truth table I was talking about that if, um, as, as go do this uh, quickly, that for uh, posted transactions, it's only actually only memory writes. Um, and then for non-posted transactions, there are memory reads, configuration reads and writes, and IO reads and writes. And this is the truth table that shows up if the severity bit is set to zero and you get a completer and, and, and the endpoint returns a completer abort, it will be signal as non-fatal. Uh, um, but since it's posted, there's not going to be completion status. Uh, you may also want to, sorry, uh, one thing, um, since this table, this is good, awesome. Uh, you may want to also clarify uh, at what point, uh, at, uh, which point uh, the error is uh, detected. Is it the uh, root port end, or the end device? This is an endpoint. Uh, the the oh, scenario is endpoint. Point. Yeah. Yeah. So then you should have one more column for uh, root port also, right? Uh, yeah, but that's that's the hold on to a thought because uh, um, I, I'm going to talk about how how even what we discussed yes last two weeks ago really really needs to get into that. Um, but let's let's keep it simple because this is a kind of complex for now. So let's sure, just talk sure. about yeah. Yep, makes sense. Yeah, just just endpoint re returning a completed board, and if the severity is one, then you return a fatal error. What gets interesting is when it's a non-posted, and remember these are usually reads, and for configuration I/O they're also writes. Um, the error status is going to be a completed board with an advisory non-fatal status being set, and the error is going to be signaled as oops, this is a mistake. Is going to be signaled as a correctable error, and the completion status is the completion. And what I mean by here is the TOP completion status. So if we can look at the um, PCIe spec, I will point you to the chapter on TOP completions. And there's a there's a field in the second D word about completion status. So there's a successful unsupported request. Complete abort and uh, I forgot CRS completion retry status. That, well, Arvind, you have a you have a section number from uh, spec version six point one, I think. Uh, have, have that yeah, actually, I do. Or, Let me. Can you, can you put it in the chat window or something? Yeah, look at section two dot two dot. Or just connect to it. If you, want to, if you want to put in the column F there, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Uh, what, yeah can, what, what version of the spec? I'm sorry. Is this the. Uh, I'm looking I think, at. I six. think the latest, right? Six, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Probably 6.2. But it should be. I, I don't think it changed. Okay. Yeah. So 2.2.9. Uh, and the title is called completion rules. Um, <clears throat> and, and that's perfect. By the way, just so everyone knows, we are perfectly allowed to, to point people to sections of the spec. They like that. That is 100% uh, approved. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yep. OK. Um, and so this completion status is really important because then we talked about, um, and this is a recap that last week that if we do get a complete report, we want containment, right? We want um, to make sure that the driver doesn't continue to use the all ones data or worse, you know, just think that everything is okay and and, and just, just run as normally. So one of the things we talked about is that, hey, we should enable DPC. And we're talking about whether or not we should enable DPC in one of two ways. One is um, trigger DPC on 
fatal errors um, or, or non-fatal fatal errors, which would take care of row five, six, and eight, but it would fail on row seven, right? And so I think for the most of us, we said, okay, then we should set the severity to one so that everything will always show up as a fatal error and that the the port closest, and now I'm using very carefully chosen words, the port closest to the device with DPC enabled would be triggered. The alternative, and why I'm stressing about the completion status here, is that the root port, if it implemented the eDPC with RPPIO exception, um, and that's that's described in the uh, uh, AER section of the spec, right? Um, <clears throat> then you can trigger DPC on a on a complete or abort completion. Um, but th there's a couple there's a couple issues about all of this, and so that's that's. Um, let's get into, let's get into, let's get into it now. So, um, in the beginning, when we started all of this on, on slide, on this slide, right, we had written root port behavior and, uh, what do root port behavior should be? What happens if there's a switch in between and, um, if there's a difference between whether or not the error is, is is what Anil was alluding to, what what if the error was detected by the root port versus what if the error was detected by the endpoint? So we're sticking with the endpoint discussion here. The thing is that if you trigger DPC on the nearest downstream port, right? The reason we're saying it that way is because we don't want if there was a switch in between you didn't want the root port to trigger DPC because then the entire switch fabric would go to DPC. That's we're, that's, we're, we're yeah, we're, we're blowing up with the blast radius is too hot. It's too yeah. big. Right. And so, all right, the, the next notes here, because that the reads and uh, because they're non posted transactions, right. You have to have a completion. And so if, the switch triggers DPC, there is a good chance the root port is going to see a completion timeout. And this, this is what the notes were, right? The switch isn't the requester of the transaction, so it doesn't have a scoreboard. It's not the one who's tracking, oh, I send out request and I I I I'm going to time out on anything if I it's just it's just forwarding data. So I forwarded the request from the root port and it's gonna forward the completion back from the endpoint. Except when the switch triggers DPC, you're not necessarily going to see a completion return to the root port. And that's actually documented in the uh, PCIe spec. There's a note in there. On section two dot eight. Hey Arvind, I, I'm not following you. Let's let's walk through the scenario. Yeah, I don't let's think, walk it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that makes sense to me. So, all right. So I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna draw a couple of pic. I'm gonna try to draw a couple of pictures here. So this is a root port. Switch up. Uh, switch down. Stream port and then endpoint. Right. So, um, the vertical is going to be line, so it's going to do a read request, right? And then this is going to follow with a read request, follow with a read request here. And then this is going to be a read completion uh, with uh, CA, okay? And if we had enabled DPC, right? DPC, uh, read completion with CA, and also we're going to forward um, uh, a signal. Yeah. Erwin, maybe just add to the read request that like the first one is say tag one and the second one is tag two. Yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah. Very good. <laughs> All 
uh, you're skipping ahead, but yeah, yeah I think, I, I think yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, my my specific view, I guess, the way I'll word it is that only the initiator and the completers track the tags for the non-posted requests. So ultimately, as Erwin mentioned, the switch is just passing TLPs. It doesn't know what tags still have outstanding TLPs the payload. And so that's where this quirk comes up. I mean, it's a, it's a choice that was made. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, as, sense for the switches not to try, have to track this, but DPC is this case where it's important that you are cutting off a link without resolving completions for all the outstanding tags and data. And so the, the reason we need, in, in, this, in this particular view, what really matters is whether or not the completion happens first or the signal error fatal happens first. But if, if uh, what, what Clint was saying, if, if there was multiple read requests, right, um, and you can have it, um, uh, it's a little bit hard. Maybe I should do it this way. Um, cheats a little. Right. And then, all right, it's going to do a recompletion of tag one with the status completer board. And it's a signal, it's going to signal a, um, um, it's going to signal a, a uh, error fatal. And just, just to make it interesting, we'll have this back here, this back here, this back here. Uh, the root port would then see this, which is fine. Um, but DPC triggered. But notice what happened to the recompletion with tag two. And eventually here, we're going to have a timeout for um, tag one. Uh, I just messed that up, huh? <laughs> we're going to have a timeout for tag two. So, okay, so, so, so now I, I see your point now. So basically what you're saying is that any transaction that already made it before the error fatal signal arrived and DPC triggered, they will, they'll have the completion going all the way to the requester, but any transaction that got stuck behind, the link goes down, they are left behind. So some, but actually, hold on. Isn't the non-posted transaction? I see. So the switches will not tracking are not tracking that. So, so therefore, uh, the CPU root board they will time out. Interesting. I didn't I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah. About yeah. I, I, so just to add to the complexity, you of course say if you're doing peer to peer, you could have not just the root port but another device that initiated a read a non-posted transaction against that device that went down and now it too will have these timeouts so hold on hold on so uh, that's a that's a bizarre we should be seeing this quite often we don't see this kind of problem so i thought that there were some switches that had read tracking and scoreboards to do completion timeout synthesis that that is not part of the PCIe spec. I think this yeah, comes yeah. back to the vast majority of these the switches now exceed the PCIe spec in their capability. What Erwin is talking about here is what the PCIe specification guarantees, which is not much. Yeah. yeah. So so uh, actually, help me understand. Uh, if I keep this uh, UR and CA as a CVT zero, OK? Then what happens? What was the question again? So right now you walk us through the flow when uh, you are in CA, CVT is one. Yes. Right. If I change the CVT to zero. Ah. Okay. Then uh, what happens? Yeah. Let's uh let's try that. All right, and so this would be signal error core, right? Mm -hmm. No DPC trigger, mm -hmm. and then um, and then you would return tag. You would eventually see tag one and two with the completion status as CA or UR. 
Or actually, yeah. Well, this is saying it was only one. Let's do this uh, completion tag to uh, and with uh, stats equals success. All right, that's that's yeah. what would happen. I mean, success, I don't care because success yeah. is good. Right? I think you're yeah. talking about uh, when there's a U, R, or C, right? Yep. Um, so, so when the this completion comes to all the way to root four or requesting agent, right? Um, this is where the RPPIO becomes interesting. Because if I don't yep. have RPPIO, right, then um, now it is the driver's responsibility to um, to handle this uh, uh, U, R, and C, A. Because I think from a root four point of view, from a spec defined, right, it is it's going to um, it won't drop the packet, but it'll, uh, it, somebody at the upper, upper layer need to process this now. And I think uh, general norm is master board, which is all ones. So from a software point of view, it will see all one, right? Yes. And uh, so exception handling, if it is there in the driver, then we are good. If not, then we have problem. And we can't guarantee that. Yeah. So, so what do we do? That's where I think the root RPK will become interesting here that if I have RPPO enabled, um, and uh, and this is uh, I'm becoming even more interesting. <laughs> if I make the RPPIO, if I enable RPPIO with the UR or uh, CA, um, then let's, I have to let's keep the CA because UR gets super complicated. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. CA, okay, good, good, good. <laughs> Thank you. I was struggling with that. <laughs> yeah, so CA, right? So CA, if I uh, allow RPPIO, so RPPIO has then two options, right? Either correctable fatal, I mean, CA is correctable or, or fatal. They know non fatal. And um, so if I keep, uh, now if I keep the RPPIO as uh, correctable, then I got the error reporting point of view done. I got the error, error information. I got the header information also. Um, but then the rest of the flow will still remain the same. It will be master board and then, and some, I, somehow software need to handle that. Yep, right? yep. Uh, if I do fatal, then I'm going to do NMI. Right. Uh, that means I will go to. I'll do a kernel panic. Now well, that might be okay. Uh, fatal. Well, no. With um, RPPI without DPC. Yeah, RPPI without DPC. Right. Without DPC. Without DPC. Yeah. Because uh, right now, so far we are at least so far, right? We are assuming that DPC is not enabled on the report. Mm -hmm. And then, right. and then, so okay. So I'll I'll do the fatal event and I'll I'll crash the machine which I'm okay because I got the CA and I don't know what, I can't guarantee the rest of the execution now and I can't even pinpoint where to where to start right because it's coming in the in the middle so the right. thing I, I, mm -hmm. I I wanted to make sure something you said right so there's 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 RPPI of severity and. Uh, RPPIO EXC, right? Um, yeah. Exception. This severity zero equals CA, one equals to uh, fatal, fatal, right? Fatal. Yeah. Fatal, but fatal. Mm -hmm. this is only used, uh, only used to trigger uh, DPC because I the or or SM. Uh, I shouldn't say SMI, S error. Um, yeah, which can be routed as a MSI or uh, no, no, no MSI though. Our, our, our PPI errors don't trigger at MSI. Our PPI does not trigger MSI. You saying? Yeah. I see. Not, I didn't know not, that. not according to the spec. That... Which is fine because yeah. which is fine. I mean, at least I've not seen any design so far where. Uh, uh, RPPI purely handled through kernel or uh, through OS, right? Probably firmware. So it's too complex <laughs> to <laughs> manage it to uh, uh, kernel level. I mean, maybe yeah. there may be some solution out there, but we are not there yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so SCR is fine, right? So again, uh, I think if, if so there are two solutions, if I kind of step back, right? One is uh, I at the endpoint, I keep the CBD to one. And then trigger DPC, but I, I, I now I'm exposed. I'm exposed to this issue where some uh, transition will time out, and that's absolutely normal. I, I, don't, I can't do. I can't handle that. 
Well, well, on okay. So if the root port triggers DPC, then because it owns the scoreboard, it needs to respond with all the remaining ones as a UR or CA. Right. Did the root uh, port detect the uh, segment. Sorry. Yeah, the root port should have returned, you know, either poison or all Fs to any posted pending transactions. Right. Anything that was pending would be completed. Right. And, and, but what I was trying to understand in your example, Erwin, is you're saying the downstream switch was the one that detected the DPC. Yes. And so, so he doesn't then, in fact, complete the pendings. That's right. Because he's not tracking the pendings. Right. But, but, but to me, what that says is, you know, the root port needs to be in that equation because otherwise you're not going to survive DPC. <clears throat> it, right? it does. I think the quirk in my experience is that PCIe spec did, never really grokked uh, completion failures, like missing completions. Yeah, so it's a vendor specific as to what exactly happens. I guess empirically, you know, most common systems crash a core when that happens. You get some kind of machine check, but there's nothing in the PCIe spec that requires that. So I think this is where it's kind of a vendor specific thing, but it would be great to have a more common way. I, I completely agree that if DPC is activated on a downstream port, it would be really great if there was some way sort of in Linux say that we could signal over to the vendor specific driver that would go and uh, zap uh, the completion scoreboard and provide all the completions that the chip needs to be happy. Some chips may not need that, of course, but you know, I think practically speaking, all current chips do. I, right, I, I guess what I'm wondering is why wouldn't you set up you know, the root port as the, as the DPC because it takes up more devices than necessary. So the notion here is you have this switch hierarchy with a lot of devices on it, um, all behind one root port. If you DPC that root port, you're taking out, say, all 20 devices or whatever. Whereas if you DPC the switch closest to the endpoint that produced the error, you minimize the blast radius. Yeah, in particular, especially if you're trying to recover from the DPC event, you know, taking down the fewest devices possible is as an advantageous. Yeah, uh, but, I, uh, but Clint, I want to add one something here though. Uh, the way I understand the DPC flow was designed, it accounts to scenarios where when the root port DPC is triggered, yes, at that moment, uh, the driver need to be unloaded. But then uh, as a flow, the ECR flow, the link need to retrain, the DPC need to be cleared. And then we need to come back, driver loaded, it need to be loaded, and then rest of the all the cleanup need to happen. So it is kind of baked into the stack if somebody implements correctly and all the all the drivers support uh, un, and unbinding and rewinding, then that flow should work. The problem that I face I have faced is that some of the drivers don't support that, you know, the whole recovery flow, and then everything fizzles off. So and that maybe what I'm saying is that. If, if we can get the DPC implementation correct across all the vendors, then that problem can be solved. Well, but that's across all vendors for all types of devices everywhere, which is a very high bar. Correct. I think, correct. yeah, our experience is that there's, on a hierarchy, you have, say, four vendors involved, the root port, the switch vendor, and, say, two or three uh, endpoint vendors. And one of the endpoint vendors may be well behaved and the other is not. And so that's where the DPC, you want to only actuate for the well behaved endpoint vendor and never DPC the other vendors if you can help it. You are absolutely right. That's the kind of stop. To me, it's a stop gap. It means since we don't know, therefore, you know, we can play safe. Right? Uh, but I think as an as a industry initiative, if you can drive towards that, right? and make some sort of recommendation or a sure. strong recommendation. That would be awesome to drive through this right here. Well, well, I think I think we're all aligned on that, Anil. Uh, and, and so if you remember that that drawing or the, the, the driver proposal I gave you, so what we want to do is define how things should work, make sure that all the vendors are on the same page on how DPC works and that, that it is implemented correctly. And then what we want to do is 
with that driver have a layer right above it where it sets up the default settings based on the standard we come up with. And then when we find something that violates the rules for us, we we alter the way DPC behaves. But, right. but it will be on a kind of but, a port but I, but I will just add, even if DPC worked perfectly everywhere, there's still be ultimately benefits to a customer to DPC the fewest things possible. Right, right. So, well, for that, yeah, the wherever board. it's possible, yeah, wherever it's possible makes sense. But I think in this example, this is a very nasty example, by the way. And this is the, the most fun example uh, where, you know, requester is a CPU, right? So it's the requester's responsibility. Right. If I don't get something which I need it, right, then I need to take the action. And, and so therefore, ideally, the DPC should trigger at this root port. Well, I, I think, I, so I kind of agree and I kind of don't. I agree, absolutely agree that the requesters should provide a way that plugs into the DPC machinery that ensures a proper cleanup. Okay. I just, there's yeah. no guarantee that the root port is the only requester in this system. And so this so, is the work where yeah. ideally all of the requesters would be able to clean up cor correctly. Correct. No, no, I mean, in this example, right? I mean, if, if this was a, let's say, a NIC car, right? Uh, peer to peer kind of thing. I, I, is that what you're referring to? Like uh, when you say other requester means what? Yeah. Peer to peer or what? Yeah, peer to peer. It could be another accelerator device. It could be a NIC. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably wouldn't be an SSD, but it could be a smart SSD. Yeah. It could be, it could be, yeah. I mean, you're kind of an end device requesting something, right? Um, well, actually, that would be a little bit different flow. Let's focus here for a right. Let's, so I think that right now the, the discussion is uh, uh, two discussion that we need to up level, right? The CVRD at the end point, is, should, should that be zero or one? And what are the trade-offs, right? And uh, if it is zero, sorry, if it is one that we started with, uh, what we just learned that by doing that, there's a risk of uh, some... Uh, Pending transactions, returns or uh, completions get get uh, lost, and uh, it will be very hard for the switch, switch root port to now uh, figure that out. So the best thing they can do is CTO. So you you kind of cascading first error into second error, in sort of intentionally in some sense, by taking DPC. So I think DPC, in my opinion, again I'm just sharing my opinion, taking DPC is a kind of bad idea here. <laughs> yeah, at least, by the way. Yeah, so Anil, that's exactly what I was thinking. That mm -hmm. if you can't resolve that you're going to be able to clean up from DPC, then don't do it. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm looking at this going, you know, the S error path is better, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I, I, the exactly. idea is it, it would crash the box, but it, but it would still clean up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, um, yeah, I, I think there's a trade off here, especially from a cloud provider. I feel there's cases where uh, you want to DPC a device, not because you can recover from it, but because it doesn't impact the host system. Maybe it only impacts a VM. And you, you're right, you may have to just kill that VM, but it would be, it's ideal, of course, to not take down the whole host just because that one VM's device failed. So, so Clint, uh, I, let me uh, ask you one question then. We just went through the example that Evan gave, right? There are, there are much, multiple other completions uh, uh, got stuck behind this uh, one that got the DPC, right? And if those belong to some other VM, how are you going to handle those? Oh, well, those yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's an aspect, though. It's very important to keep track of who is associated with each resource. How will you do so, that? That's the, <laughs> well, no, 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 but a perfect example is like in Linux, if you're using VFIO, uh, you VFIO attach, say, a, a VF from a NIC, from a GPU, et cetera. So you, you know what resources may be impacted uh, by the DPC. So um, when you say you know means who driver knows? The, or, the, the, uh, the cloud. The cloud oh. provider. It's our. If you're renting a machine, you better be able to figure out who's paying for it, right? So we know who's using PCI devices. Yeah. Uh, you're not yeah. defending though. <laughs> at the, at the moment of the time. Money's involved. The, the, believe me, we can do it. No, if no. Rama's had his hand up, I yeah, yeah. 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 Him yeah. before I say something else to. Yeah, just my comment was like, yeah, the DPC. Like we enabled at system level a few years back, it had problems like uh, 
uh, during a testing validation like uh, I, I think Anil and Drew like some of us discussed a hey, we want to do like a device level DPC flows uh, right now currently that kind of interfaces are not supported okay and uh, like uh, that is one problem second is like a storage devices because of hot plug nature of that okay always supported all the stack right uh, whereas like uh, even networking as that dpc flow because of the uh, like when the network uh, traffic is like uh, uh, recovery retries okay uh, but other like kind of accelerator kind of devices does not have some other devices where the problems okay uh, i think uh, like doing that standardization across dpc for the device level uh, then pushing that through OS Linux or Windows stack, that will really help calling out as one of the improvement. Uh, I'm not following you, Rama. <laughs> Can you say one more time, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like maybe summarize it, it is, is like DPC system levels, like enabling DPC at the system level, right? Okay. Uh, like has caused a lot of problems, right? Uh, there are like maturity in the some device types like a storage device, network device, DPC software stack is ready, right? But not for all the system devices. Okay, uh, I'm just sharing some. I of see. The... So what you're saying is that because we are not we not every vendor at the same level, we need to somehow figure out a solution that can that can manage and handle this mixed bag where some support, some doesn't support. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And that, that was kind of what I was advocating for it as well. And I think a great example is you may know that your smart NIC can clean things up fine. It's just say you have to FLR the VF and that's fine. But you know that your NIC is in that state where some other device may not be trusted. And that's exactly why, you know, Drew and I and others have been working toward this policy perspective where every vendor, every cloud provider, et cetera, is going to have their own decisions about what they trust the qualification of. And that's fine. That's what we're trying to provide the space for. Uh, but there is the aspect that, yeah, we would like the industry to over time get better. <laughs> so so what would be your proposal, Clint? I'm, I'm not following that still. Let's say, yeah, let's so say this, this is, is where, hmm. yeah, this is where just improving the machinery, um, you know, kind of uh, suggesting best practices, which kind of goes to what Erwin is talking about here, but as a policy mechanism, sort of we are we have this a proposal that sort of provides flexibility where each provider on say a per device, per configuration, whatever basis could deploy a different policy for each of those scenarios that maybe uses DPC for some scenarios, doesn't for others, you know, adjust the AR severity based on devices being well behaved, not well behaved, et cetera, or even just the RAS desires for a specific product. You know, all of Georgia. those that's are Linux fine. Linux changes, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. There are Linux changes to better interoperate with what AR is really capable of delivering. And so we do need Linux code changes for that. But we are also looking for sort of having an IMA and you know, an in-band agent which will help you know, instruct and enforce the policy aspects. Um, so and, and, that, and, that, and that agent is importantly driven by configuration files so that yes. we can make changes to our fleet without rolling another BIOS out. That is the key. Yeah, I, I think one of the challenges we have, and we've had, is, yeah, BIOS rollouts are very disruptive and annoying. Uh, even if it's just a kernel change, that is also very disruptive and annoying. So ideally our end state is that we can push a purely user space, non-disruptive payload to adjust some settings. And if it's causing outages, we just roll it back and it's very simple and fine. No, no, I think that that's a, that's a, that was not the question I was raising. Um, in this context of the example we just took, right? And the decision about the EVRT and the DPC uh, enabling disabling, what so what I'm hearing you from you is that in the virtualized environment, you would prefer to set the CVD to one and then have the switch down import trigger DPC. Yes. I, I there's no blanket answer, I think is the real conclusion. Yeah, we, there's no <laughs> we have some endpoint devices that behave reasonably well. 
and we have others that just don't. And so that's where it's definitely on a per endpoint device, you know, even from one vendor, different generations have different quirks. <laughs> I would say. So you're saying that we need a flexibility? Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I can have a little explanation though. Uh, part of this is based on like poison handling, right? And and so you know if if the device doesn't support poison really well, let's just DPC it and make sure it doesn't get the poison data to act upon. But um, let's say that we have things get better and and PCI device vendors and driver writers get really good at handling poison. You know, we we'll, I think we're going to have discussions here where we say, hey, we could take some of these fatal errors and turn them into corrected errors. Do you want the uptime? And I think our answer would be, yeah. So there may be other other things really pushing us to use DPC for uptime in the long term. But I think in the short term, it's more like how do we just keep things clean in our data center and keep corrupt data from escaping? I do I, I got it. I, let's focus here, right? Because you're, you're making a very generic, generic statement, and I, I agree with you, but that's not helping here. <laughs> so let's let's walk through this one, right? So I think what I'm hearing from Clint is that uh, uh, decision to enable DPC at the switch downstream port should be really uh, dependent upon the type of device and the capability the device offer, and we want a flexibility to enable or disable. DPC. I, I mean, and you know, that was the point I was making. I don't think you heard it, but my point is too that we would have different goals for for uh, reliability versus containment. We might tune. So you know, can we come up with a standard thing? Maybe, but maybe we need to still be able to tune. Yeah, I, I got it. I'm, yeah, I'm part of this. It. Yeah, I think a part of this does come back to the individual uh, platform owner's use case. If they're serving a, a high density of a lot of VMs, then they probably want a robustness for the host system, but maybe they don't care as much about the robustness of an individual VM. If they're offering uh, sort of a more complicated, large scale VM offering, they, they might actually care about both. You know, but there's a lot of offerings. We, we don't envision that there's one answer that meets the needs of all the, all the yeah. parties on the call. I mean, as a whole here in this team, right? Uh, if you have to give some of the to come up with some recommendation, configuration recommendation, right? So one of them would be to uh, configure UR as a CVT one, UR and CA. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, 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 maybe. Hard yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe one, right? <laughs> one of those, right? In that case, in that case, what would you, what would would this team recommend? Like, because I'm lost right now that if he said. The CVD to one and DPC gets triggered. I'm now I have a risk of uh, some transactions, non post transactions are lost. So, are you saying there's some ways to address that by changing some specs? I mean, some uh, uh, define some additional uh, requirements uh, on the root port side. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because if 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 each vendor provided a mechanism to do the scoreboard and validation then it doesn't, wouldn't matter where the DPC is. We just need to work with the vendors, work with Linux upstream, et cetera, to take advantage of those features. And I think, you know, Erwin's certainly involved. A lot of people on this call are involved. Like every vendor has their own hooks for improve, making things better behind the scenes. It's just, they're not in the spec. They're not usually publicly lit up in Linux. But I, I think it shouldn't be an obstacle to us making forward progress and improving things. Obviously, we'd like to suggest the specs uh, globally improve, but the problem here is that PCI Express is only one piece of a much larger puzzle, and it's it's challenging for the PCIe specs to yeah. sort of drive a larger scale change. Okay, I'm I'm still lost. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not sure I understand your scoreboard concept. Can you please describe it more? Do you want to talk about it, Erwin? Yeah. Well. So the scoreboard, if we go through this, and, and there's there's more surprises and twists and turns, okay? So this is, you understand that the, the report is going to have a timeout on tag too, right? Assuming that the report is the initiator. When we go, talk to peer-to-peer, -peer, right, then that peer-to-peer -peer device uh, has this. Yeah, tag to the timeout, and then there, there's some more transition right. already got in, right? Got out, and they all start. Cascading, there'll be cascading effect of timeout, right? Right. And yeah. Of course, we care about tech two only. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And then all that discussions we had, and there's a reason I, I had to talk about some of these errors in this in, in, in this in this in this uh, uh, order, because remember why I was trying to warn everybody on CTO is gonna come back and bite us later on. Um, because yeah, yeah, right yeah. Now, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that also. So let's just finish one part, otherwise we'll be yeah. really all over well, the place. <laughs> so the 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 thing is that one of one of the things I think we should bring up with um, the PCI SIG, more of the ass, is that um, we need to have a signal um, to differentiate between a device that doesn't exist, the device that went down because of DPC, or to say let's have a DPC signal, right? Because today when 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 the switch does DPC, nobody above it knows that that happened. And that's not going to put the, 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 the stuff in, in, in blue here, right? Once, once the switch goes into DPC, all subsequent um, read requests are going to be CA'd back or CAUR'd back to the root port. So you're going to get a ton of CAUR and luckily, you can actually control whether or not the the, the switch is going to return a CA or a UR, right? That it's, it's a little known. People often forget about that you can do this. It's by default always returning a UR. But remember, I kept saying this is why UR is ultra complicated. Um, yeah, no, I, I I I I agree with you. So what you're saying is that once a DPC got triggered, and if the tag three comes after, if tag three hits the switch after DPC is triggered. Then yeah. Switch responsibility is to return with you all. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. And then and that that's a nuance. <laughs> that's a big nuance. <laughs> <laughs> and then like if if the if the DPC if the if the switch, right, return a signal back to the root port saying, hey, I DPC'd. Um which that which it does, right? I mean, you, you probably didn't need to add that here <laughs> because the signal well, error. Well, no, no, no. So, sorry, what Erwin means is a different CPU core sends a different read request to a device that has been DPC'd. From a PCIe spec standpoint, that device is lost. And the DPC, whatever bridge did the DPC, will either return a completion abort or it will return a UR based on the setting. But that completion is completely agnostic from any prior state, et cetera. And today, software either it sees a completion of report result or a UR, but it has no idea that that happened because of a DPC event. That's what everyone's talking about. Yep, yeah. And so- It to imply it by looking at the port, right? But, but that's where, yeah, something in the software or something else outside of the PCI spec has to connect these two facts together. It has to link the fact that, oh, I, a DPC event just occurred. Someone talking to the device that was just DPC probably wants to know that that happened, but that's not, that's not, that really isn't part of the spec. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and this I was tying into like a, a UR is so overused. How do you know a UR was due to a, a, a perfectly valid request, or actually invalid request versus, oh, you, you try to access a, a MMIO space that that's not mapped to anything or, um, that it's, or you're actually this device that actually doesn't exist. Everything's yeah, so, reported back yeah. as a UR. I, I think I, I I get your thought process now, okay? And thank, thanks for clarifying. Thanks for, uh, I, I didn't understand that before. <laughs> uh, so this definitely, actually this is a very interesting thing and a very useful discussion. Uh, and uh, if we, I'm just thinking one thing loudly here that, okay, let's say we come up with some solution a way to distinguish, right? Maybe not use UR, some other kind of in a way. What is the end goal here going to be? Uh, I think what I'm understanding is, correct me wrong, in the VM environment, we want to kind of contain just one VM that was just initiated a request uh, and let the other VMs continue to operate. Is that the thought process? Well, that is, that's a goal. I think it's a little more complicated because I think MCE handling is a perfect example where you have certain workloads like database workloads that absolutely want to 
work with MCEs and try to recover when possible, you know, work with Poison, et cetera. And other software packages, it doesn't matter for VMs versus host software. It, it's a choice, but it, it is kind of separate. But I think there's a scenario where there's plenty of VM use cases where killing the VM is a totally okay answer. But then there's other use cases where, no, you actually want to surface the error into that VM and allow the VM to mitigate the issue, just like with the MCE. This is exactly the same scenario where it's a very much a use case dependent. Uh, yeah, thing. so basically you're and saying that uh, VM will get a notification like notify or such a stick bus kind of uh, behavior and then let the VM then handle from there. Is that? Yeah, but, but going to Erwin's specific point here is that there's always going to be a time lag between when the DP inter, the interrupt saying, hey, a DPC happened and software is trying to clean up, et cetera, before software will be told. And so today there's this gap where, especially with UR, the software no, may have some notion that a UR happened, but they have no idea why. And that is yeah. sort of a gap in the specs today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got it. I think that's a very uh, important aspect. I mean, for, for us, it, we don't hit this kind of scenario, scenario because uh, so far we have not used VM, but uh, who knows? We, we might have it down in the future, right? So I think this is all useful for us also. If we can come up with a, a, a uh, some sort of a boilerplate uh, template that that we need some changes here um, as a, as a strawman sorry as a strawman proposal because uh, we we are making a pretty major surgery to <laughs> to the legacy of uh, multiple decades right so it's going to be a heavy lifting but i think it's the right it's the right thing to do yeah but, but um, i mean I'll be, i think i think part of the discussion here is that there's two sides to it like Driving a spec improvement is great, and that's you know something I think everyone wants to see. But of course, it's going to be years, if not ten years, before that actually manifests as a full system level. On the other side, though, is just software improvements, especially you know working with Linux, etc., and just getting collaboration to drive that forward, especially say across operating systems, etc. And that is something where this group directly can influence. Absolutely, absolutely. So I think what we want to then pass this thing is okay. Our our north star is this. Let's define that, and then carve out, carve out some few tasks. Like okay, in order to get there, we need this this initiative. That's our north star. In the in the interim, because north star is going to take some time. There's time lag there. In the interim, what would be our recommendation? And let's put that those options. Okay, maybe option one is, you know, set this this this, configure this so so that you achieve that level of containment, and that's everything up to you. And if you make this set up, uh, you know, set up number of the option two, then uh, this is how it will look like and it'll achieve certain objective and then rest everything is up to you. I don't know, it does make sense to kind of come up with that recipe or recommendation. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think it's, every system operator will have, you know, reasons for changing, d doing the settings they do. But I think there is an aspect where it would be really great if we could say, for a specific vendor's device, if that vendor can suggest a specific combination of settings, uh, maybe a specific combination of settings in conjunction with some other vendor's device and sort of make this available sort of in a relatively standardized way, that's where a recommendation of this is how ideally you would be running your system. And you may have reasons to run it otherwise, but here are some trade-offs. I think and if, if getting do the clarity on the trade-offs has definitely been the challenge. Uh, well, and, and I think also just a, a reasonable starting point that would meet most of our use cases that was given to us by default would even be a step forward. That we just, yeah. you know, we start with something reasonable and tune it. Yeah. I mean, I can volunteer, by the way, to share the setup that we have used <laughs> and we may be wrong somewhere. In fact, I just looked at very quickly when we were discussing, right? What is our UR setting? And that's why I was kind of becoming a little, a little more vocal because our UR setting in the devices right now is non fatal <laughs> or rather you know, CBT zero. So, uh, or you are for the UR, yeah, yeah, at the, at the end point. And, uh, more I look at now, I, I feel that because we, we, we don't use a VM site, uh, so I'm perfectly okay with this error and just kill the machine rather than uh, trying to save something here, right? Um, so, uh, Anyway, I'm just suggest, I'm saying that based on our implementation, I can share the template or one example template that we came up with as a 
as a as one example scenario, yeah. right? And then we can kind of poke it and poke holes in that or tweak it and come up with maybe a few other example scenarios and and also clarify if we use this scenario or this configuration, what are the trade-offs, right? Uh, under what condition this will be useful without giving any vendor name and all, right? Um, and, and what condition, what scenario this may not be useful and not recommended, both ways, right? So that somebody who's making, who's looking at this can uh, engage, okay, well, maybe I don't want to use this, but I want to use this, maybe something in the middle. So we have three minutes. I think next time we can suggest a, we can try to come up with a suggested setting that would work. Um, for example, right now, if we just did what we did in the past and we, we had root port uh, on completion timeouts, trigger DPC, right? On, on and everything in there was spec compliant. It had, the switches was bland. It didn't have any, any extra special things. This wouldn't work, right? We, yeah, we would, we would survive the first error, but then because the DPC, then the root port would trigger um, timeout and then the whole thing would go down. Mm -hmm. um, so like, and part of the Linux changes, um, I, I, I don't remember seeing it, but I, like bec there are, and, and we know, although it's, and I don't know how, how big it is, um, I guess switches and other devices have gone above and beyond what the PCIe spec requires to do. And so let's say in this case, if there's a switch that has a scoreboard tracking and would return URCA on, on the non-poster requests to prevent the timeout from occurring from the root port, that would be nice to put into the into a a a a, a feature into Linux saying, hey, the, this driver or this device actually supports this feature. Um, how you figure that out would be device specific so that, that the larger PCI Express framework would go, okay, um, I can turn on DPC safely because I don't have to worry about a completion timeout because I'm using this good bridge or yeah. switch. Actually, you're bringing a very good point, uh, Erwin. Thanks, thanks for sharing the thought process. I, I think yeah, that should be part of one, one of our kind of outcome here, right? That if you if we want to enable DPC on the switch transmit port, then switch need to have some capability to keep track of these outstanding non post transmit. Yeah, I mean, I think need maybe it's a strong word. It's obviously desirable. It makes everything easier. That's what but, I Sorry. You know, <laughs> a specific bad, system sorry. operator might have a use case where it still meets their needs. But I think this is where if we wait for the SIG, the PCI SIG to drive spec changes, it's 10 years before we get widespread adoption. Whereas in this venue, you know, if we're discussing and we work with vendors to highlight where they have special abilities, and especially if we can, as Erwin says, make make it available in say Windows and in Linux to say, I know this device behaves better, et cetera. Uh, that's where we can have a nearer term uh, improvement. Yeah, I, no, I, I like it. I, in fact, uh, I will just take it one more level step. Let's, let's do an ECR. Don't wait for approval. But let's put an ECR together and then socialize ECR with vendors. I say, hey, this is our thought process. This is how we would think we can improve here. And uh, well, if you can support it, great. We'll take your part. So at this point, we probably ought to give someone an action item if we if we agree that we want the ECR and we continue the discussion in a different you know format. Yeah. With... But first, come up with a sort of a boilerplate bullet point requirements, right? Uh, what change we would need without giving any specific uh, PCI spec references. Right? Um, I what we need to do is, is say that we talked about this and so-and-so took the action to drive the ECR and we're done with it here. And then we continue the discussion in a, in a, in a meeting that's covered by the PCIe ECR NDA. Yeah, yeah. okay, that's fair. Let's write down uh, what, we, what, what that means. Uh, um, improvement on the switch, uh, uh, down switch basically, uh, I'm especially downstream port, DPC support. That's one one item we learned today. And I think other one, uh, uh, Clint, you mentioned about scorecard or the root, at the root port also. 
what is that i some score cooks i think I, i'm i'm scoreboard? Kind of on the scoreboard sorry scoreboard yeah. on the root board side also in case yeah uh, um, so, so scoreboard is the word i've been using but i don't know if it's industry standard um yeah, I, I, I don't remember if the spec has any specific wording about it. Um, I mean, I think it's not just on the root port, it's really on any requester um, yep. that's involved with CPC yeah. operations. And obviously on a non-root port, especially with like SROV, hopefully a VFFLR clears up all the state and that's fine. But this is where it is absolutely device dependent. Um, just, I think it, it is totally fair sort of getting a set of language to talk about how these features should work might help drive things forward. And obviously that could ba be baked into a future, you know, say VCN or in the six spec, but it would just be helpful in terms of discussing how we configure the features in this group. Yeah. Cool. I think yeah, we right. So we have, uh, do we have a volunteer for uh, taking lead on writing the ECR? I think we had uh, discussion wise, I think this topic is done from this meeting. Uh, rest of it can be offline in the emails. And uh, who is taking lead on writing the TCR uh, in volunteer? Uh, it has to be with the PCI SIG company, right? Uh, yeah, I'm not capable of writing it, but I definitely want to uh, yeah, um, volunteer to discuss um, and contribute. Um, unfortunately, I think Clint's going to be out of the office soon. So uh, he's, uh, so I think. Erwin, do you mind? Do you understand it enough to start it, and I can I can work with you on it? Let's uh, give it a, let's give it a week. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, discuss. Let's come back with with uh, volunteer by next week. Okay. I know Mark I is quite. Uh, but I, I would uh, <laughs> recommend Mark to volunteer here. <laughs> he has a lot of knowledge of this thing. <laughs> I don't know if Mark is listening or not. <laughs> Yeah, Mark who? <laughs> <laughs> there is oh. only Mark, Mark here. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not sure I would be ready to go tackle an ECN. I, uh, one, I might be able to talk to Joe Cowan and, and run it past him and see what the process is. Uh, but I, I, <laughs> uh, I think I would completely agree with Clint that, you know, any change is likely to be years in the making. Um, yeah, I, I think maybe maybe we need to think about if if, if writing an ECR just to socialize with the vendors directly is such a big overhead, then do we really want to do that? Uh, no, I, I, uh, I want it. I, mean, I want that way because it, it becomes a discipline. Well, it, then, it becomes a discipline to so, write down exactly yeah, what we so, need. Because vendors right, understand. need to have bandwidth, right? I, you know, the first question I would yeah. ask what is the actual ECN? What are you asking the PCI SIG to change? That's yeah, what we discussed yep. uh, separately, right, Mark? Uh, that's exactly the question is, okay. <laughs> yeah, but, who should volunteer to start discussing that? Well, no, no, no. I, I, think, I, I agree with Mark, though. I, 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 I think, think, yeah, you've got to have that, right? I, w I mean, you, you know, you have nothing to go forward on unless you understand what the change is that you've, yeah, yeah. Asking. No, we are discussed. We just discussed that, right? We we believe. I mean, I I am I'm, I'm bought into this. We need some changes here. Like you are basically fine granular. Let's put it fine granular. You are handling as simple as that. Okay. <laughs> and right, go figure. I, I guess I'm. I must have missed what the specific change that we are asking is. Yeah. I mean, again, I look at this and I just go, you know, if your configuration isn't going to allow the root port to trigger DPC, you know, you're hosed. I mean, your DPC is just not going to work. Yeah. And, 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 and of course, so, you know, what is the actual suggestion? Yeah, I, I guess I can characterize two things that are worth bringing up with the SIG. One in terms of switches that are already going above and beyond what the spec requires. This just relates to the scoreboarding and returning completions appropriately to avoid the uh, TCO. I think this is where it would be fairly straightforward to just add to the DPC capability a bit that allows switches to tell the software that they support um, properly handling the completions with appropriate verbiage. So that's one side. I think the other side is just sort of working, this would be a more invasive change, but just working on a proposal 
to change the TLP signaling so that the DL, uh, the DPCs, uh, whatever agent did the DPC can appropriately signal to the requester that the, the target device is DPC as a distinctive uh, flag from URCA, et cetera. So those are the two areas I can see to bring up on the SIG side. Uh, one yeah. of them is pretty modest and probably a lot of the vendors could implement it in you know six months or something. Yeah, uh, that, the say. other one would be much, um, it's a bigger ask, but sir, something worth raising. Clint, uh, I think you volunteered now. <laughs> Let's go, well, go with you. <laughs> Clint, Clint is going to be out. I mean, I'm willing to help someone and I understand why Clint's asking for us. We've spent many hours talking about it. Okay, but uh, you are. <laughs> I'm not in a position where I can draft an ECI. I need someone like Irwin's help that is, has a little more experience here. Okay, so and between you and Irwin. Let's, uh, let's uh, uh, come back to it next week. Uh, we are seven minutes over. Um, let's come back to it next week, okay? Sure, sure. Is okay. that okay? Have a great weekend. This is awesome discussion. Thank I you. learned something new. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, this is really great. I appreciate everyone being here. <laughs> Uh, thank you, everybody. Yeah, very good discussion. Yeah.